Things are still falling apart in Kenya Kwanza. The center can no longer hold. Let's have a look at this before we continue. Directorate of Criminal Investigations wanted suspects. The individuals whose images, photos appear below are wanted by the police for the unlawful activities during the Anti-Finance Bill 2024 demonstrations. We therefore advise them to report to the nearest police station for further police action. Information on the whereabouts of any of the suspects may be channeled confidentially to the anonymous Fichua DCI hotline or the police hotline and then they have shared those photos there. And at the corner there, we are seeing somebody there that's also one of the criminals. And if you look at that photo there, the person they are saying is a criminal was with Silvanus Osoro in parliament. They are saying that's a criminal. And from what we are gathering, we are being told that's a pastor, a pastor in Kisi. Kisi pastor wrongfully listed by DCI among suspects who breached parliament. A Kenyan preacher has spoken out after being wrongfully listed among suspects wanted by the DCI. Dennis Basweti said Silvanus Osoro invited him to parliament. Did Kisi Pasa breach parliament? In a notice to the public, the DCI sought help identifying the suspects wanted for unlawful activities during the Anti-Finance Bill 2024 demonstrations. The DCI further instructed them to report to the nearest police station for further action. Among the images circulated online, was that of Pastor Dennis Basweti. He was identified from a TikTok video showing him speaking into the microphone in Parliament. The sleuth mistook Basweti for one of the demonstrators who entered Parliament illegally. Speaking to Tuko, Basweti said he was in Parliament after on Monday, June 10, after an invitation by South Mugirango MP Silvanus Osoro. He was actually the one recording the video. He said, Basweti said that he had presented himself to DCI offices in Kisi. When I showed the officers the video, they actually laughed, he said. The preacher said the officers contacted their colleagues at parliament and is expected to travel to Nairobi to set the record straight. I feel bad because the DCI should have conducted proper investigations before publishing my face, he said. However, Basweti noted that he would not seek legal redress on the matter. Yes, so that's the story of the past time. DCI shared out his image that he was also part of the criminals. Last year we saw something similar to this when DCI shared some images claiming that those who are Zimio protesters and some of those images were proved not to be from Kenya. They were from some other countries. That was last year. And this year again this is happening. Does it mean DCI is not doing proper investigations before they start sharing out these images? I want us to dig deep into this for Kenyans to understand what's happening here. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give the video a like. Let's proceed. Let me start by saying this. <clears throat> Nation Today captured a story 
Six on police radar over youth demos. Nation was reporting that NIS, or rather the investigation authorities, have zeroed in on some individuals they believe are sponsoring goons during DNZ demonstrations. And they had names. If you look at Kenya's investigation authorities, I don't think they are competent. They are just throwing names without doing proper investigations. And we saw that last year during Azimio demonstrations. And even with this one, it's highly possible that they have shared some images and even some photos of very innocent Kenyans from that list of theirs. And even from that list they have shown us, we know those are not criminals. Those who are Kenyans exercising their rights. Power belongs to the people and the people can decide to exercise that power directly. When Kenyans stormed parliament, they wanted to exercise their powers directly. That's their right. Parliament is a public place. Any Kenyan can go there. So those Kenyans storming parliament, in my honest opinion, they made no mistake there. And even if they were to be taken to court, I don't think those cases will head anywhere. Eventually, they will have to be thrown out because Kenyans have the right to go to parliament. The criminals were the police officers who were blocking them from going to parliament. Parliament, I believe, should be a public space unless our laws have changed. And also, if you look at Tutu's government, the people heading these institutions are very clueless. In fact, they are incompetent. They don't do proper investigations. They are just there to play politics. And again, prosecuting these Gen Zs who went to parliament might actually augur very badly for Ruto and his government. That can, in one way or the other, unraise emotions once more. Kenyans are not happy with Ruto's government. And they were just exercising their rights to demonstrate. The police are the ones who broke the law by stopping them from going to parliament. Let me stop it there. And even before I stop, if DCI can share out that, it means they can't do proper investigations. So Kenyans cannot even trust these investigations they are doing. And this is why Ruto is failing. The people he has given jobs are not up to the task. It's high time Ruto should dissolve this government, let him appoint new people who are up to the task. If he can't do that, the only option for him is to resign. Let him allow Kenyans elect fresh leaders. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give the video a like. Those who are watching us outside Kenya, drop a comment, let us know from which part of the globe you are watching us from. If possible, subscribe, give the video a like. That information shared out by DCI confirms the incompetence in Ruto's government. Ruto gave jobs to individuals who are not up to the task. And each passing day, they keep on embarrassing Ruto and his government. Let's meet in our next analysis. Thank you.